What up? This is Astro Dim here doing the reading for September 8th, 2018. Daily moon reading. So let's see what's going on that day. Um, let me just scale back. So, 12 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is my time in the U.S., um, the moon is going to be in the third decant of Leo. Um, so of course with every third decant moon video that I do, um, I'm going to talk about the third decant of the current moon and the, um, uh, first decant of the next moon. So you guys can have a whole idea of how this moon's going to be. Okay. So with that being said, um, we are going to, um, be, well, the moon is going to be 20 degrees Leo. Um, and so that makes this a Mars decant moon. And so, you know, before we've kind of been very self-expressive, um, and creative, and then we started philo philosophizing our self-expression to get a better understanding on how it is connected to the bigger picture, um, but now what we're going to do is just use that as motivation and drive and just go with what we've been creating in general. Just go with it. Go with it with, with a plan, without a plan. We're just going to attack it. Um, you know, this is the moon. So this is like, you know, we could be doing this emotionally or it can be something physical and is emotionally driven regardless of what it is we're just gonna go straight to doing what we feel we need to do that's connected to our self-expression okay um this moon is going to eventually conjunct mercury but i'll talk about that um you know when i talk about the moon being in virgo okay when it makes that switch but let's talk about the other aspects and how it could be um, affecting this. So this moon is um, going to be sextile Venus. And with its sextiling Venus, we're realizing that, yes, you know, we need to um, be a little bit more focused. Uh, we are not the focus, but our desires is to be focused on relationships compatibility whether it's romance or um, platonic um, but you know all this time we've been really kind of being more centered towards our own self-expression and um, being connected to what we create but we're starting to realize as we kind of push through this emotionally motivated thing that they go hand in hand and so it's just given us a brand new perspective on how to go about things so um, it's really cool. But even if your desire is not to be in a, in a relationship, your desire is to understand relationships, especially as Venus is going to be, you know, going to Scorpio um, during the new moon. You know, um, Scorpio is about intimate, like the more intimate relationships. That's so not really about, about compatibility, but to really just join together into one, um, a transformative love. So. It's going to be a big theme there for sure. Um, another thing too is that this is going to be um, square Jupiter. Jupiter is in 18 degrees um, Scorpio. And it's going to be square and Jupiter towards the um, earlier part of the day. And, you know, the funny thing about it is that, you know, this moon... <laughs> it's funny. So remember I was just saying how the moon is um, connected to Venus. I mean, not Venus. Yeah, it is connected to Venus, but it's connected to Venus and Libra. And Libra is more about the compatibility and meaning of the minds. Um, but, you know, Scorpio in, is more about that deep transformative love that I was just talking about. That's a little bit more than compatibility. Well, this, your, our emotions or this, or this moon is saying like, yeah, I understand that, you know, relationships are necessary, but I don't know if I can get that deep. So that's why the moon is square in Jupiter. You know what I mean? It's saying like, yeah, we can't go that deep. I'm still into 
being self-expressive um, and I can take the step to understand relationships are important but to get that deep in relationships is a little too much so that's what that moon is basically kind of expressing here with Jupiter being in Scorpio too you know not only um, does this bring um, strong energy on that transformative love but it's helping us philosophize it but our, deep down inside like we we just don't really want to focus on even the philosophies of a deep twin flame karmic relationship type of love you know this is leo energy you know leo is about romance and dating not that deep deep love so it's kind of a a weird thing going on there and the reason why Leo is about romance and dating because it's fun and it's self-expressive. It's still a lot about self, but Scorpio love, Pluto love, eighth house love is more about you as a unit. It's the best description of a composite, <laughs> as you can think of as a composite chart, you know, or best, um, you know, comparison, I guess, when it comes to the meanings, you know, just blending into one. So, yeah, that's going to be something for sure. Um you know, with the moons in Leo, it's going to also be um, in conjunct Pluto. And, uh, you know, I mentioned this the day before, too, a lot of these aspects. But kind of with it being in a different decade, it can shed a different type of light. And so um, with this moon um, in the earlier part of the day, um, in conjunct Pluto, again, Pluto wants to focus a little bit more on building your status and your career. And Leo Moon, in the third decan, understands they want to move forward too. But again, they want to move forward um, with their uh, with the creative side. On um, It kind of reminds me of like, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but I remember um, I'm a big, big um, NWA fan, right? And so... I remember like looking at the old interviews and saying how like Dr. Dre was like, yeah, I don't really care about the business. Like I want to do, I just want to make the music. I just want to make the music. The Leo Moon in the third decade is just like pushing forward and making the music, making the music while Easy E's more of the Pluto. Like, no, we got to build a status, build some um energy around us so our your music can be heard so it's kind of like you tossing that energy around you both want this end goal but you're going about it in a different way that's very descriptive of in conjunct energy okay um so yes this is connected to you know empowerment and getting um being empowered by your status, career, and reputation. But Pluto also represents um relationships. So if you're trying to get into a specific relationship and get in a status or a reputation from a relationship, you know, there's gonna be some disagreement three agreements there because though know, again, the moon is not about that deep relationship and really connecting. It just wants to have fun, the Leo moon. You know what I mean? So that's going to be something that you have to think about for sure. Um, um, this moon is also in conjunct Mars. And with it being in conjunct Mars, especially Mars being in a critical degree, um, you know... You're that that whole idea of what I was talking about with Pluto with being driven to get the success get the success, the status, the reputation, the career is like really strong and is making you feel a little bit uncomfortable. Um, it's making all of us feel uncomfortable, honestly, because we kind of don't know how to go about it. Um should we kind of be for the people or should we kind of focus on our own status? So that's kind of like the the difficulty right there. Um, you know, because basically Mars being in 29 degrees is switching signs. So you are very strongly, um, you know, if, and if, if you're 29 degrees of anything natally, you're very strongly the sign that you are. So like Mars is extremely... Um, Capricorn right now but it does have um, and the and actually that energy is heightened but it does have some um, Aquarius coming through so 
it's like this heightened as like energy in one sign but some of the other sign is coming through so it causes confusion that's why it's a quote-unquote critical sign and so you're having difficulties within yourself trying to figure out if you need to focus on your own status and career and reputation or should you be of the people as well like how to balance that out you know because you can do both but balancing it out is really difficult and you know with the mars being still in capricorn it is leaning more towards building your own status and reputation and career but with the moon in conjunct it it's also bringing another idea like should I also consider just being the most creative I can be you know and with the moon moving over to Virgo it's like should I be focused on the details as well so it's just mixed with with having this placement and having the moon switch signs is basically you are pulling in all different types of directions not really understanding how you should go about things um, so it's a little bit tough. There's going to energy. You might feel some frustration today, just to be honest, um, because you don't know where, how to, where to go. So what I suggest you to do is see where Mars and Pluto is in your chart and also see where the moon in where the moon is as well. Um, just so you can get a better idea on how this may apply in your life. Okay. Now, um, and excuse me, I'm like sniffling because my allergies are acting up. But let's talk about the moon um, being in the Mercury decant of Virgo, okay? So the moon's going to switch over to Virgo um, around like 12, 11, 30-ish um, Eastern Standard Time at um, September 8th. And, um, you know, the moon, this is interesting because the moon is in Virgo. Um, and it's conjunct Mercury, which is a Virgo sign, and the Mercury is also in Virgo. So it's we are being the probably the most Virgo moon possible. And with Virgo moons in general, what it and it's in a, a Virgo. Um, did I mention that it's in a Mercury decant? All of them in a Mercury decant, so it's very just mercurial, very um, Virgo. But anyways, with Virgo moons in general, when it comes to how they feel about their emotions. They can be quite practical with them and try to organize them and try to be, believe it or not, routine with their emotions um, or dealing with their emotions in a routine type way. And routine may be just putting your emotions aside and burying them and burying them and burying them. Um, But I also know a lot of uh, very aware Virgo moons who routinely meditate to uh, like adjust their emotion so you know basically what Virgo old moons do is they um, try to tend to their emotions in the most organized way possible which is interesting and that's why a lot of Virgo moons um, struggle with um, their emotions a bit because emotions are ever-changing and changes when they want and it depends on the environment and so it's hard to kind of make that a routine organized situation you know so and I've known a lot of Virgo suns and moons like they'll be cool as shit and then they'll like randomly like burst out and be pissed off and just rash and you're like what the fuck just happened (laughs) you know what I mean so very interesting so um with us being in the Virgo decant, I mean Mercury decant of Virgo, and conjunct, um, this moon is conjunct Mercury. We are definitely going to be that to the utmost degree of trying to even f- f- kind of find a way to be more routine with our um, and organized with our emotions, maybe saying that maybe we should meditate five times a day, or maybe you should do this, or maybe you should do that just to attend to your emotions so you just won't be this crazy emotional wreck, um, which is fine. Whatever works for you, just go with it. You get what I'm saying? But just know that um, emotions are ever flowing. So you may have, you you can do the routine thing so you can have like daily maintenance. I think that's a good idea, but just know that there's going to be some days which you, where you, can, you can't do the maintenance like that, that you have to address something right then and there. And so it's really important for you to just get, understand that on a holistic level too. 
that sometimes things just pop up and you have to address them. And um, that's just how life is. So it's very, very important for you, for people to understand that, you know, um, especially with Uranus um, trining, um, you know, this moon, which is a good moon, but, you know, was a, which is a good aspect, excuse me, but, you know, like, random things could pop up and either ruin your plan and you don't want the random thing to be good like in this case to pop up and you get mad you know what I mean that's one thing you don't want so you know just be prepared that whether good or bad something may pop up and you just need to understand that maybe your your procedure your plan your process is not gonna is you know gonna be knocked down over that and you have to be okay with that okay um Another thing, too, is that, um, you know, all the same aspects that I mentioned with the Leo moon is going to be happening. But I'm going to kind of go over them as well as the other um, aspects that I missed talking on um, just so you can get a bigger picture of how this is going to be affecting the moon while it's in Virgo. So, you know, Venus still in 29 degrees um libra um again we have the desire um and it's kind of a focus on on being in relationships really connecting with people relating with people you might be even going to an event where you can talk to people on a one-on-one basis you know that type of vibe um but deep down inside you just kind of again want to tend to even if it's not even organizing your emotions you just want to tend to be in routine and organized in general um, your daily routine, but again, you're realizing as the moon goes more and more into, um, n- near Venus, you know, you're realizing like, okay, but relationships are included in my routine and in my daily life. You know what I mean? So you're just trying to work things out in your head to see how you can incorporate relating with people instead of being a, a kind of more self-focused, like when the moon was in Leo. And in Cancer, honestly. Um, This moon is, again, um, you know... Actually, it's not really squaring Jupiter uh, because it's... Yeah, it's not squaring Jupiter. So let me move to the next one. This moon is, though, trining Saturn. And so, again, you are more on a planning and organizing type of vibe. And, you know... You understand, too, with Saturn being in Capricorn that, you know, building your status and reputation is very important. Um, You know, you not only it's just very important to kind of grab your authority within your status and you understand that. And so now what you're doing with the moon being in Virgo is making the plans and setting them up and going with them, especially since Saturn is now direct you can go ahead and kind of make that move, which is real dope. Um, and, um, you know, you're kind of understanding too, that it sometimes it may take longer than expected and you're okay with that. You just want to make sure that you do things right, which is good. Um, this moon will not be aspecting Pluto anymore, but it will be aspecting Mars and, um, and, and it's going to be in conjunct Mars. So, with that again you know this is funny because um you know it's in conjunct um the moon mars is but they're that it's in like they're both in earth signs but literally the moon is in the early part of virgo and the mars is in the late part of capricorn and so Again, like, you know that planning is important because Mars is in the Mercury decant of Capricorn. Um, You know, you have to go through things a certain way, but they kind of want to push forward with their plan and routine. While the moon is like, no, we got more planning to do. It's going to take a while. We can't just push forward. We have some emotions to address still. Um, and so what I can kind of see too, is that the Mars is like wanting to kind of like push forward, not even with the plan and action, but push forward with planning, um, in a more like assertive and aggressive way 
while the moon is saying like no we need to kind of tend to our emotions and kind of do the same thing but tend to our emotions not just go at it assertively aggressively so that can be something too um this moon is also in conjunct chiron um chiron wants to be a little bit more self-involved which is fine you know there's nothing wrong with being self-involved it's just balance is important but chiron wants to kind of attend to the um emotional trauma that they experienced connected to their appearance their uh, personality their persona um while the moon is like more the moon is a little bit tricky because it does want to focus on their everyday life and routine so those are two separate things but then this moon is very detail oriented and could tear itself apart instead of healing it saying like oh well maybe I was made fun of because I was just too loud or too annoying um and just really just this moon could tear you down if you kind of use it to focus on yourself instead of your external life and with Chiron being here, it's, you know, what Chiron's trying to do is heal you from it. Yes, they want you to address what you've been, you know, ridiculed about and receive childhood traumas about. But it doesn't want you to be um, self-deprecating. So be careful with that because they're not seeing things the same way, Chiron and the moon, okay? And then lastly, I already talked about this before, but, you know, the... um moon is trine uranus so with uranus being in the venusian decant of um taurus random things are going to pop up dealing with money dealing with um you know your self-worth your material worth relationships and stuff like that um the thing is is that it's funny the moon um it's going to work out in your favor and it's going to be nice but with the virgo moon you know it doesn't like surprises even good ones so even though it's going to work in your favor um you may be a little bit thrown just appreciate what life throws at you okay because <laughs> it's you know with this uranus being retrograde it's been throwing kind of fucked up stuff so if it throws you something good just go with it all right so this has definitely been longer than expected. Um, I'm going to be doing the new moon in um, video. Um, you probably would have heard it by now, honestly. But I'm going to do the new moon video. At least I'm going to record it. And, um, right after this one, you can um, I'll do a snippet of the new moon in Virgo here. But then you can catch it in like completely if you follow me on Patreon, okay? Um, it's patreon.com slash astrodim. You can find the link on the description box below. Um, you can watch a snippet there too. And then watch the whole video there if you are a patron. But you can watch a snippet here, of course, too. All right. So much love to y'all. Um, come support the kid. And I hope you like this. All right. Peace.